Hey, opposing good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be the AHL edition of the Ponky Take as we preview the P Bruins versus Bridgeport Islanders. I always almost say Sound Tigers because their uniforms were sexy as hell. The Islanders' uniforms, fine, but I really like the Sound Tigers as an AHL uniform. But we'll get into the teams as they were separated by 10 points in the standings in the regular season, um, where one team had 83 in the Providence Bruins. And the Bridgeport Islanders had 73, and some people are going to be saying, but Joe, there's a difference of games. Well, both of these teams actually played 72 games, so that's actually not a bad way to gauge it compared to the win percentage thing, which put the P Bruins in third compared to the Bridgeport Islanders because of their overtime games and what have you. Not going to explain all that into the sixth place. But I think these teams present closer than the standing sheet and those sheets tell you because... What the Providence Bruins have more and probably overall silky Mitch skill with the Cameron Hughes, Fogarty's, definitely the Oscar Steens that are still developing, the Stanikas that are developing. They added an absolute stud as well um, in Johnny Beecher, um, who's now coming up. And the only reason he didn't play bombastic minutes at Michigan is because look at that freaking stack team that they had there. Uh, Kopanen, uh sorry if I mispronounce the names, I suck with certain names, but... Samuel Asselin has also been good this year. Chris Wagner's inactive, but if he's able to um, come down and play as a veteran. Even uh, Tra Trollmox, uh, Ed Edwards Trollmox as a rookie, could get over 20 points as a rookie. Uh, that's been helpful. So they have good depth um, on this team when it comes to scoring to the Providence Bruins. And I would give the overall silky Mitch skill to the Providence Bruins as well. What, But the thing that, and I'll go over the P Bruins before I actually say this point, but Jack Akan, also a very good young defenseman that's going to be eventually a good defenseman in my mind for the Bruins. Victor Berglund is a guy that might eventually be a good defenseman for the Bruins as well. Definitely performed well as a rook at the AHL level, and that's what you want to see for a guy's continued progression. Obviously, he was drafted in the seventh round, so showing that greatness at the AHL level in your first full season to perform really well as a rookie Definitely shows signs. He's more of a simple guy that can make the passes, can give you some points, but is going to continue to get better and I think develop into a good, well-rounded, better in the defensive zone guy that definitely can give you the offense because you saw from this season he has the offensive ability, but it's not like he has the Jack Akan overall ability. He's going to be one of those probably third-line defensemen if he cracks the NHL level. I think Jack Akan can definitely be a top uh, four. And that would be kind of where I just kind of see the difference there. Cody Caron's also pretty good as well uh, when it comes to him there. They also have uh, Lewington as well. So they have some guys there that obviously uh, have been around the pipe for a little bit on the P Bruins. The thing that uh, worries me a little bit going up against the Bridgeport Islanders where Lewington's a very good AHL veteran defenseman, so he brings that veteran status. They have other guys that bring good veteran status on their team, don't get me wrong, and I think all those guys are going to have good series. The only thing I worry about is when it comes to, and they have two good goalies too, and Kaiser, who's a rookie that played like a freaking beast, and I'm high on him, loved watching him, watched a lot more Providence Bruins game, because I always try to watch at least 10 games of every team since I cover all three levels from ECHL to AHL to NHL and then watch all the highlights and condensed games of stuff as well when I can't watch the games as much as I can but Providence I watch well more than that because Groznik's one of the best AHL goalies and uh, he's just a good veteran to have there. Kyle Kaiser is a great rookie that seems like he's going to eventually be potentially a backup for probably Jeremy Swayman who I think will eventually be the starter for the Bruins but that's just my take. And then uh, Old Mark will go and be successful elsewhere because they're both good goalies. I just think that's the way it'll go. But I think they have a good job in net. I do think they have a good defense. Literally the only thing that concerns me about the Providence Bruins, which is why I'm giving the nod here in favorite in this three-game series to the Bridgeport Islanders, is they don't have as much overall experience as the Islanders in these moments, if you look at the Islanders, you have the Andy Andreoffs who have been around for, it seems, forever. The Chris Terrys, who have been around one of the best players in the league, it seems, forever. Then you mix in the Koivalas, the Holmstroms as the young talents. Um, you have the Cole Bardros have been, who have been around for a minute. Parker Watherspoon's a veteran defenseman. 
Uh, so they have a very good... Dalkal, he's a veteran in the AHL that never was able to find it to be as good as they've hoped at the next level and had a struggling season this year, but can get going. Zornick's a guy that impressed me every time I've watched him against the Phantoms. So I think the only thing that concerns me, which makes me favorite the upset here, and honestly, with how much I love certain guys on the P Bruins to watch, like Akan, um, like Cameron Hughes, obviously... Um, especially when it comes to net minding, Kaiser's the big kahuna on campus. That's a joy to watch if he ends up getting the starting nod. Uh, but I hope I'm actually wrong because I would be rooting for the team that I didn't pick. But I would say the team that I think has the better chance because they have the experience. And I really like when teams have the experience. They also have the experience in net. Corey Schneider had one of his best seasons in a lifetime. And then Jakob Skarik is a good young netminder. So I think the experience of Schneider with the good young netminder in in um, Skarik and Schneider, I would say, is more of a overall AHL, ever since he came down from his NHL time where he was good for the Devils at one time, has been a very good AHL goaltender. So was Groznik, but Schneider's been doing it longer. I would give the nod to him there if they go with those two. And I would even give the nod to him because of his experience over Kaiser. So that combined with the fact that I really like the experienced defense, not just from the defenseman, but the fact that Andre also a great defensive forward at the AHL level as well. He brings the veteran status to their team. That that strikes fear in my eyes. Chris Terry might not be the sexiest defensively, but he makes up for it offensively and gives max effort defensively. So Zarnik's very good on both ends, especially at the AHL level. So I think... The Islanders' experience might bite the Bridgeport, Bridgeport, might bite the Providence Bruins in the butt. So that's why I'm picking the Bridgeport Islanders, almost at Sound Tigers again in this series. But I do think it's going to be really close. I think the series has a chance to be one for one in the first two, therefore taking it to the full three games. I think it's going to be close, but I like the experience of the Providence or not of the, of the Bridgeport Islanders against the Providence Bruins to kind of overtake the P Bruins better probably silky Mitch skill like I said at the beginning of the video but not the experience to the level of what the Islanders have on the roster and I think that might shy through but we'll have to see peace out everybody stay safe this has been a series preview to the Providence Bruins excuse me versus Bridgeport Islanders peace out everybody